Hi everyone, uh, welcome to the seventh lecture of the series. So in this presentation, um, I'm going to go through some of the special semi-rings and their properties, right? So let's get started. So in, a, in, in, in certain steps of op optimization of uh, weighted finite stage transducers, um, there are special properties of uh, semi-rings that we, we try to take advantage of so to establish certain shortcuts, right? So these five additional properties are, are not, not of, of semi-rings are commonly used. Um, so they are the commutative semi-rings, the idempotent semi-rings, the k-closed semi-rings, weakly left divisible semi-rings, and the zero-sum free semi-rings. Now these, these semi-rings these semi are special and um, they, they aid us in the optimization of our transducers, right? So it's important that we know uh, what, what, they, what they are and uh, how we can actually take advantage of them, right? So let's introduce the first one. So a commutative semi-ring. So a semi-ring is commutative if and only if, right? The multiplication is commutative as well. So for example, tropical and log semi-rings are commutative. And the reason is very simple is because um, the multiplication is defined as classical addition. And classical addition uh, is commutative. So uh, just take note that tropical and log are commutative semi-rings, right? So the next uh, very special semi-ring that we talk about is known as a the idempotent semi-ring. So uh, 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 an idempotent semi-ring is, is that when, whenever you take x plus x, right, it returns you x right, for all x in the, the, the set k. So oh, what are some of the examples? Uh, well, tropical and string semi-rings are idempotent. How, how so? So let's see. So x plus x in a tropical semi-ring is equivalent to writing the minimum function uh, or, or taking the minimum between x and x. So what's the minimum between x and x? Well, well it's x, right? Right. The minimum between three and three will return to three. In fact, the minimum of itself is always itself. Uh, so therefore, a tropical semi-ring is also a idempotent semi-ring, right? As for the string semi-ring, x plus x is is uh is known as x wedge x. So this wedge, I didn't really go go through this. Uh, but this stands for the uh, longest common subscript, uh, sorry, subsequence. So suppose you have a string x, right? What is the lo longest common uh, subsequence with it, its own self? Well, it's its own self, right? So given a string, say, a, p, p, e, right? We compare it to a, p, p, e, which is the longest, what is the longest subsequence? Uh, well, it's a, p, p, e, right? It's itself. So x plus x, in this case, gives you x. So this uh, this is known as the idempotent semi-ring, right? Um, all these special cases of semi-rings, all their application will come later on uh, when we deal with uh, we with uh, operating on uh, uh, the transducers themselves, right? So followed by followed by the third special semi-ring, it's known as the k-closed semi-ring. Now um, suppose we, we define a few things, right? A to the power of n a to the power of n is equals to a times a times a times a n times, right? When I say times, it's of course the multiplication defined by the semi-ring, right? And a to the power of n, again, don't don't make this mistake of thinking that a is a real number, n is a natural power. No, uh, it, it, this itself is a symbol and it, and it stands for this, right? It stands for this, right? And of course, we can further define a raised to the power zero, right? It's equals to one bar. Now, this it is defined this way, so it remains analogous with real numbers, right? But uh, just note that it may or may not be real numbers, right? Imagine A, imagine that A is, is uh, well, A is, uh, suppose it's a string. Well, a string raised to a particular power, what, what, what could it mean, right? So it just means that uh, uh, given a, 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 a string semi-ring, it will be A concatenate A concatenate A concatenate A n times, right? And uh, the A, a string raised to power zero, it's just one bar, right? That's all. So just note that, just don't confuse the notation here. So a, a, a semi-ring is a k-closed semi-ring, if, if and only if, right, that this particular expression hold. Now, when I first saw this expression, it was quite daunting, to be honest. I've never seen anything like this. So what, what I decided to do is to write out everything. So this is, this O big O plus is just the summon. Or, uh, or summation or, or the, the, the capital sigma, if you will, that you have learned before in secondary school, in, in junior colleges, right? 
So if we were to write everything out, it just it, it just means a to the power zero plus a to the power one plus a to the power two a to the power three all the way to a to the power k. Now this expression because it's been defined, a to the power a to a natural power has been defined. So this is a very well defined uh, 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 statement expression, right? So it's just one bar plus a plus a squared so on and so forth to a k, right? And the right hand side will just be the same one all the way to a k, but plus a to the power of k plus 1. So what does this actually mean? Uh, it actually means that suppose you're given the sum here, the, the sum from 1 bar, a to the power of 0 all the way to a to the power of k, adding the the a to the power of k plus 1, uh, uh, you know, doing it again doesn't make a difference to the sum. It's it's the same. So so we call it a k close semi ring, is that if you can find, a, 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 you can sum it up to a certain power and then uh, anything that happens later doesn't really matter anymore. Right? You say that it's k close, right? So now you can you can start to think of why why it's called k close because once you're here, once you you, you sum to the first k terms, uh, yeah, the first k plus one term terms, well, you don't really need to worry about the sum anymore because the sum never changes from that point onwards, right? So what are the few uh, semi rings that are that are zero uh, zero close, right? So the positive tropical semi-ring, uh, positive meaning that instead of defining it over the real numbers, you define it over the positive real numbers or the uh, non-negative real numbers, right? This positive tropical semi-ring is zero close. So what is zero close? Zero close is actually this. Well, you just replace k goes to zero on the left-hand side, k goes to zero on the right-hand side. So it's just one bar is equal to one bar plus a. So if I if I can show that if this positive positive tropical semi ring right follows this property, I can say that it's zero closed, right? So let's try this. So one bar one bar in a tropical semi ring is defined as zero, right? And it's equivalent to taking the minimum between zero and a positive number. Right? Remember this is a positive semi ring. So between the minimum and and the the the, the minimum between zero and a positive number, you will always return zero, right? So but what is this? What is this expression? Minimum 0a is equivalent to writing 1 bar plus a, right? 1 bar plus a, because that's how the tropical semi ring is defined as. So 1 bar is equal to 1 bar plus a, hence it has to be 0 closed, right? So I've shown that a positive tropical semi ring is 0 closed. Now, what about a string semi ring? A string semi ring, for example, right? The 1 bar is the empty string, right? And the empty string is equivalent to the Epsilon wedge a some finite string, right? So what does this mean? Remember wedge means the longest common subsequence. So what's the longest common subsequence between any given string and the empty string? Well, it's the empty string itself. Hence this these two are equivalent. These two expressions are equivalent, and hence there's equality here. And but what is this? What is what is epsilon wedge a? Well, it's actually one plus a in the, in the context of a string semi ring. So I can sh I have shown that both a posit positive tropical semi ring and a string semi ring are zero closed, right? And this is particularly useful if you realize that there's redundant paths in your finite automaton, right? It, which means that if you if you were to continue to loop a certain path, right, after k plus one times, it no it no longer makes a any difference. So you you can actually ask the algorithm to stop, right? And then you can just return the the value here, right? So this is one application which you will see later on and then of course you have the weakly left divisible semi ring so a weakly left di divisible semi ring uh, occurs whenever for for all a a addition right x plus y such that they are not the uh, is the the additive identity right there will exist a z in the set k such that this holds x is equal to x plus y times z right so both tropical and log semi rings are weakly left divisible. Now this this definition is a handful. So let's see what it actually means, right? Re remember, so a uh, tropical semi ring is this, right? And if I do write this particular thing out, if I write this particular uh, x is equals to the minimum between x and y plus z, right? I can actually find a z, right? I can find a z. So I can take z equals to x minus the minimum between x and y, right? So that for all minimum x and y. Right, or x plus y under the context of tropical semi ring, I can actually find a z, right? There exists a z for all pairs of x plus y. So uh, so this value is clearly 
either x minus y or zero right x minus x so so the point of this is that whether or not you can find a z given all all possible pairings right, x plus y right for a log semi ring well you, you can find it as well right you can find it as well you, you if you do the algebra you arrive at this expression here right you should try it on your own to try to get this expression here right so this is the, known as a weakly left divisible semi ring now why this is useful now know that that the the sometimes in the semi ring the additive uh the additive inverse right may not exist so um but we do not require it to exist um you know most of the time but we do need this to exist x plus y because uh certain operators operations for for transducers um requires a uh, the an, an a, 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 a inverse of sorts to exist right such such as the weight pushing algorithm uh, so on and so forth, which you would uh, you would get to see later on, right? So uh, there's more to come when it comes to weakly left divisible semi rings. And finally, the zero sum free semi ring. A zero sum free semi ring uh, implies that if x plus y is equals to the additive identity, it actually implies that x and y are both the additive identity. Now this is just a fanciful way of saying that there is no additive inverse, right? For all elements in set k right so here's a short proof of uh, the probability semi ring uh, being uh, being a zero sum free semi ring now like i said this is just a very fanciful way of saying that for all x there is no minus x right and the only possible way to get this expression x plus y equals to zero bar is if both x and y are both the additive identity right so you can tell that the probability semi ring Right, any uh, between any any value between zero and one, right? Besides besides uh zero, right? It doesn't have it doesn't have the uh the additive inverse, right? Half, let's say for example, x equals to half. What's the additive inverse? Is negative half. Negative half is not in the interval of zero one, so it's not in the set k. So we can see that that the only option left for x plus y, right, to be zero is if both x and y is zero right so this is a more formal proof it's, it's known as a proof by contradiction um, I'm not going to go through this you, you can read this on your own and I hope that you understand right I really this is a this is a very short but simple proof of uh, why a probability semi ring is a zero sum free semi ring now all these special cases will of course will come into play in the following section where we discuss more on the uh, operations on transducers Right. So again, just to go through, a tropical semi ring is uh, it's actually five of them. It's 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 all it's commutative. It's impotent. It's k close. It's weakly left divisible. It's also zero sum free. Right. And so on and so forth. You can see that I I've, I've summarized the results that I've gone through. Right. So uh, again, manipulating uh, some WFSTs. Right. Some of these properties are used. So if you want to ma manipulate a WFST and you're working on a certain uh, certain semi ring, say a string semi ring or a tropical semi ring, so you you know that the tropical semi ring has all these uh, additional properties, right? You can take advantage of this and then maybe do something to your al algorithm to make it shorter. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, there are many many other other applications, right? So for example. Uh, there are four to five main operations like composition, determinization, weight pushing, and minimization. Now, all these alg algorithms, right, they require the semi ring to have to have certain properties, right? For example, for example, say the uh, weight pushing algorithm requires your se the semi ring that you have defined on to be k close, weakly left divisible, and zero sum free. Now, all these are uh, all these uh, algorithms will be introduced to you one by one in the following. Uh, uh, sections and uh, lectures, right? So again, just a summary, right? You have gone through is that uh, what is a tropical semi ring, a log semi ring, and uh, so some of the special cases of semi rings. Now, these are the two usual references that I have asked you guys to uh, read up if you are more if you are interested in knowing more. And if you have been, I hope to see you in the next lecture.